and we're going through the west right now, which means we're just about 90 degrees to them. Starting to get louder, as you can see. He just turned it over to the other station. That's why we're not hearing it. He's back now. This station is in Jamaica that we're listening to right now, which is just about due south of here. Well, we're listening to him, Pi. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about spotting? Okay, well, we have... We have a, uh, let's turn that down just a little bit, but we have a, uh, a computer screen here that this computer is, this program is tied into the radio. And on one of our future shows, we're going to talk a little bit of, uh, in, in more detail about the software that's involved with computer logging of, uh, uh, on, as far as ham radio is concerned. This particular screen that we have up here now, we are connected to the internet on, uh, uh, with this computer and we're actually monitoring a website where people are, are listing these various, if you, you know, if you, if you can focus in on these, these are letters that signify a call sign of a station that's in a particular part of the world and it's saying what frequency they're on and, and maybe a little bit of information about them. <clears throat> and so we just took, I took the mouse while we were, we were setting up here, I just took the mouse and clicked on this and the next thing you know, the radio actually went to that it's 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 fun, it's amazing how ham radio and the internet have all intertwined now. Rather than taking away from the hobby, it's added to it. Oh, absolutely! It's an uh, integral part of each other, and uh, it's just uh, it's just just as almost I you know without it, it's hard to operate anymore. I mean, uh, equipment has got a lot more sophisticated, and uh, and now that uh, they're just really just partnered up, you can control your entire radio from. Uh, from just about anywhere in the world. You don't have to be in this room to control this radio anymore. You can be uh, in your automobile down in Georgia or Florida and you can completely control uh, the station and turn your antenna and do just about anything you want via the internet. Maybe make one comment. Uh, a lot of times when people come into this room, the first question they ask, why so many radios? Well, there's a really good reason for that. Uh, I'm not only a ham radio operator, but I collect radios and I really enjoy working them on, on them and fixing them. For example, if you look at this gray box over here, it's a transceiver made by Collins Radio back in the early 50s, and it's the first transceiver ever made. Uh, that transceiver was, uh, was used in uh, the U-2 when it flew over Russia with Gary Powers. Not that particular one, but uh, one just similar to that. And uh, so we used it. A lot of the, the equipment that we enjoy today came out for the military. And uh, gradually, uh, a lot of people, a lot of hams got involved and they would be able to secure some of the equipment. So that's, these are collector's items, essentially. When those things were made for the military, the cost was prohibitive for, for oh. most people. It was just way beyond uh, our, our capabilities. And so now, now these things that where the military no longer uses them and they have other equipment, the... Um, the prices, are they, have they come down to, to something, or, or have, has eBay, has that been a factor in driving up some of these things as far as collectors are concerned? Overall, costs have come way down. That unit probably cost six or seven to ten thousand dollars, depending upon what you got with it back in the early 50s. And consider what salaries were back then. You almost uh, took a half a year salary to buy just a ham radio set back there with some of the cost. And now, a lot of these sets are just reduced to. Uh, and the reason I talk in, in uh, time versus uh, uh, purchases is because when I used to talk to the Russians years ago, they really didn't understand rubles and dollars. So they always used to ask, how long do you have to work to buy your transceiver or how long do you have to work to buy an automobile? And we would say, well, you know, it's probably two months salary or something like that. And they would say, wow, they have to work 10 years to buy an automobile. So you get a pretty good idea. But a lot of it are radios that I've collected. Uh, and fixed up and just have here. Once in a while, I put them on the air. It's like people having a current automobile and maybe having some antique uh, cars they like to drive once in a while. Well, different and, and different radios have specific uses, although nowadays a lot of the radios will do a multitude of things. And from my experience, I've seen that radios are, have, have a lot more, <coughs> there's a lot more to them, a lot more built into them. But I see that you have some other radios here that are from VHF, which obviously, uh, I say obviously, I mean, people that, that use this stuff know that this radio here is something used for uh, the HF, the high-frequency bands, 
and then you have these other radios here that are that are for VHF, um, for localized communication. I think the antenna that was up on the top of your tower, the smaller antenna, was for that. Is that that's the absolutely correct? <laughs> the larger radios put out a more power, and they work on lower frequencies, which just basically mean they're you know you hook them up to large antennas, and you can talk to the world. Large power, I mean 100 watts, same power as you would draw on a 100 watt light bulb. So not big power. The smaller radios, a lot of them mobile radios, they're usually uh, usually uh, work in an FM mode versus a single sideband. These radios are for local communications. But a lot of times uh, with the advent now of the uh, Internet, you can tie these radios right into the Internet and work the world right from your automobile without any problem at all. But basically they're made for local communications and uh, made for mobile, your automobile driving around. Or and local they, emergency use, too. Definitely local okay. emergencies, because a lot of times, and most hams will have uh, auxiliary power, batteries, uh, solar power, and so forth. So when the power goes out and you've got a problem, get in touch with the nearest uh, local ham in your neighborhood, and he'll find some way to communicate uh, for emergency purposes. So something like that radio there, or maybe one of your walkie-talkies, you could, you could power that off of one of those... Um, those uh, jump start things that we have for, uh, for our cars, oh. and you could probably run that. Work for, for hours. Okay, it would work for a long time. Exactly. Right, yes. and that would give you some reliable communication. Correct, and uh, uh, this has been a lot of lives saved by, uh, by ham radio, as you know. Well, I know down here in Situate there was some pretty, uh, pretty uh, interesting times back when we had the blizzard of 78. I know that there was a lot of damage down here, a lot of, uh, and I was personally involved with some of the ham radio communications then. I know you were, and... Uh, it seemed to be a very valuable resource. Oh, absolutely! And we were able to get uh, uh, we were able to get emergency uh, uh, vehicles to people that really needed them bad, and uh, all the, well, the telephones out and and uh, everything else. Uh, and you know, you depend on your cell phone, but sometimes the cell phone towers go down too, and uh, because sometimes of lack of power. Sometimes they're loaded, where everyone is trying. You to can't get on. Yeah, That's exactly right. 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 And uh, even when uh, Vietnam was going on, we were able to handle traffic. Uh, a lot of the loved ones, of the soldiers over there knew where they were and if they were, they were out of danger and so forth. So there was a lot of good services done uh, in this particular hobby. Um, as I say, you know, these are for local communications, but they work through repeaters. A repeater is nothing but another radio that, that you will transmit into that will repeat your signal at more power and higher up. So it will extend your range. And that's a walkie-talkie? would also be able to work into some of the repeaters to extend their range, too. Exactly, Battery yes. Battery-powered. Okay. And with a walkie-talkie, I believe you would mention that one time on a previous show, you can be walking down the street in L.A. and talking to your friends up here in the Boston area. Oh, very, no, yeah, right. right. No, but just like yeah, a cell phone in one sense. Yeah. Uh, and in addition to some of the, the radios, essentially this is a... This radio is a little larger. It's a newer version of this one. You can tie on a an linear amplifier, and this will go out to up to 1,500 watts output and it'll which give is, you which is part of the uh, which technically we are allowed with, with within the range of our licenses from the FCC. That's that's the maximum power ham can run 15 which is plenty of power. You truly don't need any more power uh, unless you're a broadcast station you need 24 hour reliability. But basically the amplifiers such as this national this is an older one but it's uh, still in really really good shape and it's these are fun to work on because even this day and age, if you've got radios 40, 50 years old, you can still get parts for the most part and, uh, and uh, fix them. It's a good feeling. Bob, I see some sort of an award up here. As you work, move around, though, you said something about uh, getting some of the equipment and fixing it up. I see some sort of an award up here with your, with your call sign on it. You want to explain a little bit about this, about something about uh, amateur radio and computer flea markets. So, so what was, what's, is there something associated with you? personally in flea markets? I wasn't going to talk about that, but since you brought it up, excuse me, I keep turning my back to the camera, but yes, this was given to me by a gentleman by the name of Whitey Doherty uh, down in the uh, in, uh, southern part of Massachusetts. I love to go to amateur radio flea markets, and I like to wheel and deal, and so he just made this plaque up for me, uh, basically says, never pay full price. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I know many times I've paid full price when I needed something. So it was just a, a little fun award. I would like to just point at another award that would be more, okay. well, actually, sure, this is 